Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is July 16th. It is a Tuesday. Um, this is a knitting po or a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do all day every day. And I currently have a cat running around my feet and the things that I have placed in front of me and he's causing quite a ruckus. <laughs> um, I have various social medias you can follow me on. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Ravelry. I am most active on Instagram, so please go follow me over on there if you would like. I also have show notes, so links to things that I will be talking about will be on my blog. If you're on YouTube, the link to my blog is down below, or if you are on my blog, everything is already there. Um, I also am a knitting pattern tech editor, so if you or if you know of someone who is in need of a knitting pattern tech editor, I would love to work with you. If you would like to send me a message on Instagram, we can start a conversation, or if you would like to check out the Graceful Edits tab on my blog, all the information is there if you like to gather information. So, that is very happy. Rusty is now giving himself a bath, so hopefully he'll calm down. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we have a lot to talk about this week. I feel like I say that every time. Recently, <laughs> there's just so much going on, so many things that are happening. Um, so, if you would like to grab something tasty to drink, something to craft upon, something to snack upon, an animal to snuggle, laundry to fold, whatever it may be, I hope it is bringing you joy um, or rest if that is what you need, or I'm helping you get through an unpleasant task, which is also a thing. Whatever it is, all those things, none of those things, whatever it may be, and you can come back and join me for some crafty, for some crafty chat. <laughs> I've an iced matcha today. I am recording much earlier than I normally do. It's actually before noon. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's post workout need some caffeine. I'm trying to do better about my caffeine intake because, um, you know, too much can really do a number on you sometimes. <laughs> and we need to be able to sleep well, right? <laughs> so I have a nice matcha and I've been enjoying that in the mornings recently. Um, so that is my drink of choice today. How are you? Are you good? I hope you're good. Um, where to begin? I have no idea. I have gotten a lot done um, purely because I also have a mosquito bite that I just scratched right before recording. It was a big mistake. I'm gonna try and not scratch it while I record and be distracted. It is so itchy. Um, what has gone on? Everyone. Um, so if you are new to the podcast or are just unfamiliar, which is very valid and fair, I don't say this super often, necessarily, but sometimes I do. Um, but I live in Houston, um, and if you were aware of the weather <laughs> recently, <laughs> we got hit by Hurricane Barrel. It was just a Category 1 hurricane. Um, it was bad. It could have been worse but it was still bad for a lot of people. We got hit pretty hard. Um, no damage to our house or houses around us, thank goodness. We were without power for four days and there are still people without power. And it was a week ago yesterday. So with it just being a category one hurricane, that's not great and there's a lot I could say about that. I'm not going to say it because that is a whole other discussion and I don't want to get angry because <laughs> I will. <laughs> so we're just going to leave it at that. Um, I'm very grateful that we have power. I'm grateful that um, power has been restored to so many people so far. The linemen are doing such wonderful work, um, but the companies are not doing so great. And yes, it's just not, not a good situation. Anyway, so that happened. We were without power. It was so hot. And um, 
I didn't get as much knitting done as I would have liked because I was just so hot and uncomfortable. It was really unpleasant. Surprisingly, on the flip side, I got a lot of spinning done. Which you would have thought that that might have been a hotter thing to do because of like the fiber actually being in my lap and the fiber is like more of a fuzzy thing maybe I don't know but needless to say I got a lot of spinning done I got these two babies done um, this was getting ready to be plied last time we chatted and there it is in all of its glory I did not count the yards as I nitty knotted it up it was a bad bad move of me um, but probably like a sport weight. This is Three Waters Farm fiber in the Road Race 3 colorway. This is Polworth and Tessa silk top. And I think it did pretty good. Pretty happy with how it's turned out. It has not been washed yet. I'm assuming that it will bloom a good amount. A good amount. So there it is. Pretty happy with that. That's gate number one. Skein number two is my favorite so far, which is not a lot because I did half of a skein and then just this one other skein. <laughs> I do have something new on my wheel, so there is that, but this is definitely my favorite so far. This is another Three Waters Farm um, braid, and this was called Flowers in a Vase. It is Merino, Superwash Merino, and Tessa Silk, 40-40-20. And here we are. Bye bye I'm just very happy with these colors and how they turned out. It was just such a beautiful braid to begin with. Like, you can't really go wrong. And I did count the yards on this one, and I got 304 yards, which I'm pretty proud of myself. It's definitely um, probably a sport heavy fingering weight. I'm so happy with this. Um, like... I really, I felt, felt like I found my, I fell back into rhythm of the two-ply because I really, it's not that I struggled with this other one, the road races one, but there are some, please focus on me. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's not that I struggled with this one necessarily, but there are definitely areas where it's not as tightly as plied as I would like. For the most part, it's pretty okay, but there are definitely areas where it, it's not as good for my preference. Um, but with this, I just like was locked in and I just did such a good job, not to toot my own horn, but like, ugh, it's just so little areas of this that are just so good. I'm so happy with this. I think because I have so much yardage, which is wonderful, I want to make this be a color work sweater of some form. I do not know which sweater doesn't need to happen right now, but that is definitely what I would like to do. I love these colors. I think it's just so, so pretty. So pretty. So then I kind of took a day, day and a half break. Um, and then I started something new. Um, half of it is on I'm almost done with the second half of it, which is on my wheel currently, so I will not take that off to show you, and you can't really see all the colors on here, but here is a finished bobbin. So on the outside, we've got some blues and some green and some white, and on the inside, we've got some yellow, orangey colors, like a yellowy green. Very fun. This, when I pull it out of my fiber box, did not have any information to go with it. It is super soft and very slippery. <laughs> so it has been a bit of an adjustment for me, but I'm excited to get my hands on different fiber contents and be better at spinning and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like, uh, again, the first little bit was kind of rough, but like once I got into the swing of things, it is just turning out beautifully. It's gonna be so soft. Um, so I took the long braid and I split it in half vertically. Um, and then I did, I spun from the opposite ends. So the orange 
is at the beginning of this bobbin and the orange is at the end of that bobbin. So the orange and the blue will line up and then all the other colors will line into place and I'm very excited. Um, we will see how this goes. I have no reason to think it'll go badly, but because it is so slippery and soft and squishy, it's going to be a bit of a different experience than the previous two. That's okay. You know, we got to we got to do stuff. You know. <laughs> Doing things is important. Um also, when I was pulling out fiber to work on, I have a box full I did get to it. Last time we talked, I think I had mentioned that it was in a closet and I was going to have to move things to get to it. I did move those things because the power was out and I had nothing else to do. So the only problem was is that that did make me more sweaty and hot than I already was and it made me grumpy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so I pulled out a couple of things of fiber to like so I'm not like constantly going back to the, the box and into the closet. Um, I could just pull the whole box out, but it's not a very like cute looking box. It's just a plain clear plastic box. And I already have a lot of like bags and things sitting around here. So just not room. <laughs> there really is, but it's just, I don't like the look of it. <laughs> It's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, what a first world problem that is. Anyway, so the, the two of the braids that I pulled out are is this one, which is surprise, surprise, Three Waters Farm, in the reflection hot reflections colorway. This is BFL and Tessa's silk. This is four ounces. I do really like this. I think this is gorgeous. Ba -ba 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 -ba. And then I also pulled out this one, which again, surprise, surprise, is Three Waters Farm in the Joyful Song colorway, which is Merino, Superwash Merino, and Tessa Silk, which I believe is the same fiber content as this one. So that's exciting. I had thoughts of... Um doing these individually and then plying them together maybe. I think that might be nice. But I had also thought about maybe plying the one that's currently on my wheel with this one because it had similar vibes. Obviously I didn't do that, um, <laughs> which is okay. These could go together. I don't have to put them together, but if I'm trying to get more yardage, um, because, side note, I feel like there's a lot of little tangents. Also, so sorry for talking about spinning at the top of the episode. I know that's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, I'll be over with it shortly. Um, but the new, um, Andrea Maori sweater, ooh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's, um, got like the little patchwork stars, and it's all color work, and it's got like the ribbing up at the top, kind of like the Weekender just came out. It's her Rhinebeck sweater for the year. It is so beautiful. I love all the various versions. It is just stunning. Stunning. And I thought it would be cool to maybe try and spin some yarn for that. I looked at the yardages this morning and it, I think it's doable. Honestly, I feel like that is very doable. It's not a ton for the size that I would be making. It definitely feasible. It is worsted weight though, and I do not, I struggle to spin thicker yarns. Um, which I feel like is such a, like a, a personal problem because I know some people have hard time spinning thinner yarns, some people have a hard time spinning thicker yarns. It really just kind of depends. I have a hard time spinning thicker yarns. Um, so I think I need to do some practicing. So maybe I use one of these one of these guys and see what happens. You never know. You never know. Cause I mean, it's always nice to have thicker yarns. <laughs> Everything can't be fingering. <laughs> it's just, it, you gotta have a, a well-rounded stash, you know. I took a little break from recording 
and I don't remember what I was talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I was just finishing up talking about spinning things. Um, so I think I was done. I apologize if that was an incomplete thought. I, I'm pretty sure that it wasn't, but I could be wrong. Anyway, let's just move right along to knitting because we have a lot of that to talk about as well. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five, five projects, and then I've got some yarn that I got in the mail from one wonderful maker and stitch yarn shop, excuse me, um, that I'm very excited to talk about, and, has, and I have a new cast on in the future, maybe this afternoon. That sounds really nice, honestly. That sounds very pleasant, so I may do that. Um... Like I said, we had no power for a good amount of days. It was really hot. I didn't get as much done as I wanted to, but I still got a decent amount done, everybody. I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, my progress. Um, so, first up, uh, I'm pretty sure I had started this last time I recorded. I could be wrong. But I am knitting another Tolsta tank by Rebecca Klo of the Crayabea podcast and designs. My first one was navy, and my second will be hot pink. Hot flamingo, if you will, which I believe is the colorway name. This is a Pearl Soho linen quill that I am using. I have completed the back, and I am more than halfway done with working on the front. So I am super close to being done with this. I am very excited. I love it so much. I'm so excited to be able to wear it. I'm sorry on the camera it's blowing out. I know on, on computers and TVs and stuff it looks different. So hopefully it shows up correctly, but I love it. We are going on um, a little beach vacation sometime soon and it's been my goal to get this done before we leave. I've got plenty of time. I'm not worried about it at all. Um, so I can bring this with me and I can wear it. And maybe get some cute finished object pictures, you know, by the beach. Yes, I'm so excited. I love, I'm so excited. This has just been really all I've really wanted to work on. I don't know if it's just been the stress of everything going on and like <sighs> dealing with hurricane things and all that jazz but like this has been mindless enough that it's like okay my brain can kind of relax but there's still enough to be like okay I'll occasionally check my pattern I just know I do a bazillion decreases here and here and I do it so many times and whatever and it's been so nice. So nice. Consequently, that means that I've made a ton of progress, and that's also very nice. <laughs> I am not complaining. Um, I made the tank version before. I'm making the tank version again. Um, I have every intention of making the other versions as well in the future, and I'm very excited. So, we are loving this. Last time I showed it to you, oh, this, I did show this to you last time because I moved my progress keeper. Where is it? Here it is. I had just gotten started <laughs> and then I just powered through. Are we so happy with this? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I am just so happy with this. Um, what did I do? Why, why did I get so far? Um, I had coffee with some friends at one point, <clears throat> pre-hurricane, no, this was post-hurricane, but the I did things pre-hurricane as well that like enabled me to get so much of the body done. Ba -ba, all the way up, and then I did all the shaping and things, and look at me go. I'm so, so happy with this. So again, this is the Tulsa Tank by Rebecca Klo. I'm using Pearl Soho Linen Quill, which does have um, a large portion of merino in it, so I believe it's merino. It's either merino or alpaca, I can't remember. Um, something woolly. Is that the best summer weight 
or summer combination of yarn for for me no it does have some linen I'm it is what it is I love the color I love what I'm making with it I'm gonna just deal with it if if I get hot I get hot I'd probably be hot anyway so <laughs> Uh, that's my mentality about that. Uh, this is just my I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want because I'm going to be hot anyway. <laughs> it's a wonderful outlook to have, you know, very positive, very positive. Um, so moving along, I've made incredible progress, everyone, on my tessellated vest. <laughs> it's done for the most part the body's done <laughs> it's not completely done that's not true I have to do the ribbing around the armholes and the neckline and yes it does look very short I have tried it on it is a little short but I know it's gonna block out and also if you remember I have to go back and redo this ribbing because it's not the vibe and it was a whole process and story to get there. So I have to redo the ribbing. I can make the ribbing longer if I really want it to make it longer. Um, but I know this is going to block out. I'm going to give it a good old stretch. And it'll be fine. And when I say it's a little short, it's like it's cropped. It was going to be cropped anyway. I'm just going to deal with it. That's the vibe. <laughs> I don't care. I'm just going to deal with it. <laughs> Is it the best? No. <laughs> but it is what we have right now. So <laughs> I'm just plugging along, but I did get the body done and I'm so happy with it. I like, I'm so excited. Also, perfect timing. This is her Rhinebeck sweater for last year, the year that we attended, and very fitting that her one for this year came out today. I'm very excited about and would love to make with my own hand spun. I think that would be wonderful. Um, so we're just going to continue plugging, on, plugging along. I am in dangerous territory of not picking this up again and like not finishing it but I have to I have to get this done um purely just for getting it done and it off my needles um <clears throat> though currently technically it's off my needles but it's, it needs to be finished I need to do the ribbing and fix the ribbing I need to decide if I'm going to fix the ribbing on the bottom first or if I'm going to, I sh probably should do that. No, I should do at least the neck line first because that'll probably bring the neckline in and pro will probably, mm, I should probably just do all the ribbings first and so then that will help me see if I need to add any, any length to the bottom. So I just figured that out. We're one step closer to getting it done. We're gonna get there. We will get there. Tessellated Vest by Andrew Mowry. Um, I have, I wouldn't say loved working on this project. Um, it is, it's not the pattern. It's, well, I mean like technically it is the pattern. It's, it's because it's the like design. <laughs> there, the, the fact of having three balls of yarn attached and just a lot of stuff going on is a lot for me personally and has proved to be annoying at times especially when I want to work on it and I cannot lay out all my yarns so I can like work on it comfortably um that sounds like a me problem though so I'm not gonna say that it's the pattern's fault it's purely how I feel about the the idea of having three balls of yarn attached, one of them being a single strand of mohair. What, am, what is my yarn? So sorry. I am using, I used Kelburn Woolen Scout for the, the tan colorway. I used uh, Knitting for Olive mohair. 
in uh, it's like ballerina or something I don't think it's ballerina but it's like soft peony or soft rose soft rose it's a pink color <laughs> my um, uh, hand spun vibe yarn is Feederbrook Farms that I got from New York Sheep and Wool last year, which is very exciting. So I, it seems only fitting that it, it was in that project, and I have quite a bit left over, so which is also very exciting. So I can put that together with something, I'm sure I can figure that out. Um, so yes, that is that project. Um, Yeah, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Went to the loss for words, apparently. Um, moving along, this project, I need to measure and I need to look and see what happens next because I have just like been piddling along with this project for a long time and I feel like I've made so much progress. It's crazy, everyone. I'm so happy with this. This is my steaked project doing an uh, informal knit along with some friends of we've all picked patterns to be steaked my pattern is the eaves cardigan by kate oates here's my color work you can see my steak down the front and then i've got a steak for the sleeves ba -ba, ba -ba. and currently i'm just working on the body i'm just chilling and be bopping and around I've, my rows are miles long so it's been quite a mindless project i'm trying not to lose stitches here last time we spoke I was there, so I've gotten a good amount of progress done. I brought this project with me. Um, a good friend of mine is currently starring in a semi-local production of The Sound of Music. She's playing Maria, and we went to see that with some friends on Saturday, Saturday night, and this was my project during the performance. Um, it was so good. She did such a good job. It was so wonderful. Um, and so yeah, I just knit for three hours on this. Afterwards, my hands, man, they were tired. <laughs> I did have a 15 minute uh, intermission in between, so I did have a break then, but <laughs> knitting for three hours, goodness gracious. Um, that's why I got so much done. So yes, I need to look at the pattern. I need to measure um, and because I think, I feel like I am probably farther away than I think, but I'm getting close to, I just need to double check everything. <laughs> I know I haven't missed anything. Because right now I'm just knitting in the round. Um, but I just need to double check. I am loving this. This is just bringing me so much joy. I am excited about the next step of steaking. What? Kind of crazy that the time is almost upon us. Um, I do have the, the ribbing around the bottom is textured and has some like cables or not cables or something like that again I need to check the pattern um so that'll probably take me a good amount of time but like I said this is an informal knit along it's very there are no timelines it's just the fact to encourage all of us to do a sneak for those of us who have not done it before or haven't done it in a while or want to try a different method in my case and so I'm thinking about maybe try, trying the sewing machine method. Maybe. Or not. I don't know. We'll see how I feel once I get there. We'll see how much effort my brain wants to put into it. Because <laughs> I've done the crochet method three times before. And it's worked just fine. <laughs> Thank you. 
we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. But so my yarns, um, all of this color work is from various things of stash. We've got Barocco Lannis Light, we've got Suburban Stitcher, we've got Sweet Sparrow Yarns, we've got Kelborn Woolens Scout. And I believe that's it. Oh, got a little bit of Cascade. The gray is Kelborn Woolens Scout as well. Purchased from Maker and Stitch, my favorite place. Um, and yeah, so we're just plugging along. Here's a close-up of the, the color work. Again, this is the Eve's Cardigan by uh, Kate Oates. She's got a couple of patterns or cardigans that are this construction that I believe have steaks as well that have just different designs on them. Um, I love this, honestly. It's been, it came at a time when I needed a little bit of a brain stretch and um, needed some distraction and that was nice and then I got through that and it lined up perfectly with my brain needing a little bit of a relaxation and mindless knitting. So this has been like giving me what I need at the right time and I will be forever grateful to this project for that. <laughs> it has been the perfect mood project. I'm just plugging along having a grand old time and I can't wait to wear it it's gonna be so pretty and honestly by the time I'm done with it it may be fall and it may be still hot and it <laughs> I say fall um, but it'll be ready for when it does get cold and I will be so excited so excited we've got two more projects left um, that are two new cast ons. Oh, also, we went on a trip. I completely forgot about that. Wow. Uh, how could I forget? We went on a little trip over the 4th of July. It was honestly very needed. It was wonderful. It everything it was last minute, everything fell into place. It was perfect. And we came home and barrel hit us like literally two days later. <laughs> So we came home in a hurry and like tried to finish up the prep that we had started, not really knowing what Beryl was going to do and how severe Beryl was going to And if she was going to come close to us at all and like what would it be like and we went from getting a little rain and a lot of wind to oh wow we're actually going to be kind of roughly in the middle of the eye at one point, which we were, and we did the normal hurricane thing of going out and going for a walk in the middle of the eye which is weird but kind of cool at the same time <laughs> talk to some neighbors <laughs> thankfully though after the eye passed over it had kind of died down a little bit so the rest of the storm was really not as bad the first half was the the rough part um, but all that to say, we went on a trip before a barrel hit over the 4th of July, and I cast on two new things, two of which I did talk about the last time we recorded. I'm going to talk about this one first. I cast on my mermaid socks by Summerly Knits, and it's actually currently not attached to anything because I'm getting ready to do the heel flap. Here are my mermaid socks. Are we, aren't they so cute? So I believe they're called mermaid socks because, or it's like Mermaid Avenue, I believe is what the pattern is called. I shouldn't just say they're, they're mermaid socks because they do have an actual name. Um, I apologize. <laughs> and I've got a bunch of stitch markers that are like stuck. Okay, what is going on here? Okay. So I believe they're supposed to like mimic mermaid scales which I think is accurate I think that's very fun um I was a little confused about the sizing because it's a different stitch count due to the the nature of this stitch pattern is a little tighter so there's differences in what your new normal numbers are so that kind of threw, threw me for a loop a little bit I love doing this pattern it is slow going slow going 
Um, but also not at the same time, honestly. Like, if you get in a rhythm, it's fine. But for some reason, I was just having a hard time um, getting in the groove. I had it memorized. Like, it was very easy to follow and not need a pattern. But I'm very happy with it. I'm doing shorter ones. Um, I don't think I really want these super long. Uh, like I said, I'm ready for my heel flap. Uh, my yarn is Hue Loco in the Vanishing Cabinet colorway that I've had in my stash and was a de-stash from a friend. Um, as for my heel flap, I'm thinking of using some kind of like creamy white color for the heel flap and toe. And yeah, so I'm just having a grand old time. These are super fun would make them again even though it is slow going and that way I can um figure out the sizing I did as I was making them and as I was getting started I was like "Ooh, this seems too big <laughs> this seems too big I don't really know what I'm doing um but I did put them on a scooby or I tried to put like I enabled myself to try it on basically and it fit just fine so it was fine Maybe a little slouchy on the slouchy side, but that's okay. Once you get past the leg and everything, I'm going to do the, the foot in just plain stockinette. Um, just because. Because I want to. <laughs> and you go back down to your regular stitch counts for the foot, which is nice. So I know the foot will fit. But... My Mermaid Avenue Socks by Summerly Designs. Summerly Knits. I think it'd be super cute in so many different variegated yarns. Highly variegated yarns. It really shows off the color and shows off this pattern super well. I think it's very, very cool. So, would recommend. Would recommend. That was cast on number one. I only cast on one pair of socks. So, technically, I do have an empty pair of size ones. That I could cast something on. I did think about um, in one of the knitting groups, in one of our little text threads that we have, I joked that because um, we normally meet on Mondays and obviously Barrel was going to hit on Monday and so we were texting the day before and we were like we probably should not be meeting. I think a lot of places are obviously going to be closed because of it's a hurricane and yeah. And so I made the joke about um, casting on a, everyone needed to cast on a new project for Hurricane Barrel and I had pulled some sock yarn to cast on and I honestly was just like not, not in the mood. Sounds terrible to say. I was not, <laughs> just didn't feel it. And I got a lot of spinning done. There's that. But I just did not feel like starting anything new, even though it was going to be simple. Just did not feel it. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, sometimes you just gotta rest. And sometimes that means you also need breaks from things that you love doing all the time. And that's okay. That's totally fine and fair and valid. My second cast on from this trip is my Nebula. Ba -ba. Another bottom up sweater. We do love to see it, but we do not love to try it on as we go. It makes things very challenging. <laughs> uh, this is the Nebula Pullover by Andrea Mowry. It just came out a couple weeks ago. I am using two strands of Moondrake Fua Fua in the Rose Quartz colorway and sand. Yes, sand. Ta da! Bye bye! I, um, I had a story to tell about this tubular cast on, and I honestly cannot remember what it was. All I, all I remember is that I did have to take it out and redo it because I had done something silly, and I can't remember what that was. But it was going to be a funny story to tell. <laughs> and I'm sorry I can't remember it. Because now we're lacking a funny story. But oh well. Uh, I am loving how this is knitting up. I think it's so soft and gorgeous. This is just so beautiful. It is so fluffy and so squishy. I love it. I One of the, the things that I remember saying is one of my goals. Knitting goal or crafting goals for this year 
was to make more it's not simple and it's not plain but like more simple and plain staples I guess so some things that don't necessarily have to have like a pattern there's no like color work there's no like big texture there's no lace there's nothing like that it's just a, a simple staple nothing fancy maybe a fun color but also an, a good neutral and this falls into it also my Tulsa tanks fall into that I would say and I know that there have been other things but this definitely I thought of that when I was casting this on and I was like oh yeah that's gonna that's gonna fill that requirement that I gave myself I love that I'm loving it and it's just knitting in the round so nice love love to see it love to see it so that's my last project everyone I apologize for the crinkling plastic but I have a package to open it I literally got it um it arrived yesterday in our mailbox and we don't have mailboxes in front of our houses I have to walk to our mailbox which is a thing that happens <laughs> Not everybody has a mailbox in front of their house and um, so I, if I'm not driving anywhere and can't like drive, or I could drive to it, it's really not that big a deal. But I added the walk to our mailbox onto my daily walk and went and got the package today. Long story short, I have my package. Um, I'm not gonna flip it around because I don't want you to see my address, but I thought it would be fun to save the opening and open it now. What is this? Everyone. We all know Maker and Stitch. We all love Maker and Stitch. And, um, oh, she put it in a bag. Oh, she put it in two bags. How nice. Um, they, uh, if you don't follow them on Instagram, you should they are a wonderful yarn store and make great posts but they also host <clears throat> quite a few knit alongs throughout the year and also summer knit alongs and they're hosting two uh, sweater knit alongs right now one sweater that Liza's doing one of the owners and one of the sweaters that Catherine is doing the other owner and um, I was gonna <clears throat> excuse me I was gonna do the one that Liza was doing because I really loved it. I can't remember what the name was. My mom and my sister are knitting that one, but then I saw that uh, Catherine was making the Hipster Pullover by Hohi Logatelli that has been in my queue ever since it came out. And I'm so excited. So, my mom very kindly went and looked at yarn. Oh, these are little baby bags. <gasps> these are so cute. I didn't know they had small ones. <laughs> this is why we love unboxings, right? <laughs> you get the live reaction. Um, ooh, that's gonna be really pretty. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. So my mom very kindly went, um, and my sister was there as well. She, they went and like looked at yarns for their, their projects and they helped me pick out yarn for mine in regards to colors. And um, so Valerie packaged up these colors, this Knitting for Olive silk for me, and it got here in no time at all. And so now I have yarn to start my Hipster pull Pullover by Hokey Locatelli. And these are going to be my colors. And oh no, it's not going to show very well. Oh no! This is accurate. This olive color is more... It's looking really warm on my camera. It's more cool toned. Like it's still warm toned, but it's cooler than what's showing up on my camera. Um, I don't know if there's a way to make that look accurate. But, so I've got olive, and then I've got lamb's ears, which is kind of like a steel gray, warm toned gray. It's like um, this. I'm pretty sure it's bottom up. <laughs> it's 
It's a striped v-neck little tank and then there are these beautiful um, lace panels along the shoulders. Who knows? Maybe it's top down. I would love it if it was top down. I think that'd be super interesting construction. That'd be so much fun. It'd be very similar to her old romance cardigan. Um, but anyway, uh, actually it made me top down. I'm so excited. <laughs> the, her hipster collection, her hipster shawls, her hipster, um, all the things hipster have that like crisscross, um, lace pattern and so there are these little panels of that lace pattern up along the the top of the shoulder super straightforward um i'm very excited to see the other ones that are made and another fun thing that i read on the project page on ravelry that really just does my heart good <laughs> as someone who is currently struggling to do any kind of armhole edging there's no finishing to this <laughs> in on the project page. It says once you're done knitting, you're done. Like you do everything in one go. It's seamless. There's no edging. It's all good. And I was like, yes, this is what I need. <laughs> I need to do things as I go because I do not like going back and like fin having to finish things unless I am like somehow so obsessed with getting this thing done. I'm going to drag my feet. So that makes me so happy. Another thing is these little baby bags that I was just ooing and aahing about. Maker and Stitch, they very kindly packaged their your yarn in these little meshy bags. And now there's these little baby ones. I had only gotten big ones before. Um, and the tag says Maker and Stitch, which is very nice. This looks like a perfect sock bag. Perfect. 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 So, um, I am very excited to be doing this knit along and none of this is sponsored. I feel like I need to say that now with all the things on the internet, none of this is sponsored. I do love Maker, Stitch, Maker and Stitch. I just truly love them. And I'm so excited to be casting on this hipster pullover. I think the knit along has already started, so I'm going to pull out my needles and do that soon. I think, um, I think as a reward or like a fun little treat and also kind of like a spur kick in the pants for myself, once I get the tessellated vest done and also my Tulsa tank done, I need to and I want to start my, um, Tosh sweater, which I have in a bag all ready to go. I just need the needles. Um, <laughs> And so, yes, I don't think either of these projects have the needles that I would actually need, which is unfortunate, but I don't know what needles I'm going to be using for the hipster pullover. We'll figure that out. But I would like to cast on the Tosh sweater, hopefully by the next time we chat. I honestly have no idea. Um... What is going on? Uh, I think... Ooh. We're going on vacation soon, like I said. I can't remember if that falls over the time that I would record. There'll be a post on Instagram if I'm gonna miss another week. Um, but it's okay. Another thing that I have started is the frogging process of my um, boucle sweater. I have decided what sweater I am going to make that was designed specifically for a boucle yarn. So <laughs> I'm feeling much better about that. Um, I'm going to be doing the superlative sweater by Samantha Guerin. Seen many a beautiful uh, sweater out of that pattern. It again, was designed for boucle yarn. So. Yeah, maybe once I finish these two, I'll start the Tosh sweater and I'll also, like, actually get that started. I say that because it's over there. I had every intention of just, like, winding up the from the sweater and putting everything back into the balls of yarn. I 
have been known this year and recent years to just knit things from the sweater so I don't actually frog anything. I'm just... <laughs> I have one sweater that I'm currently unraveling from knitting onto a new sweater um, without doing anything like that. Then you do have to gar carry around two sweaters though. That's the only downside. So maybe I'll frog that, especially if I bring that with, with me on the trip. I don't know. We will think about it. We will think about it and I'd like to cast on another pair of socks. Yes. Gotta think about that. We are thinking, we are thinking. Planning, planning, planning. Who knows, who knows. Anyway, that is all that I have for you all this time, this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you've had a wonderful past couple of weeks. Um, and if you have crafty plans, I hope they are so successful. If you were also affected, affected by Hurricane Barrel, I hope you <laughs> have recovered well. I hope that you have power. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I hope any, wherever you may be living, I hope that the weather is treating you well, whether it be hot or cold. Hope it is treating you well. Um, I have all the social medias. I have show notes, I have uh, tech editing information, so you can go look at all those things if you have any questions or if I happen to forget anything, please let me know. Or if you just want to send me a message and say hi, that would be wonderful. Um, like I said, all the crafty plans that I have are, as I have already stated, <laughs> um, I do have like an itch, not that I'm like, I am already have plans, clear plans to cast things on, but there's something in the back of my mind that's like, I you still want some, this is not scratching the itch of like doing something new, like you really need to do something new. And it's like, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I keep casting things on and that scratch has not been itched and I don't know what that problem is. So maybe I need to pull out a languishing whip that's like on the more complicated side and work on that. I have no idea. I need to figure it out. So, <laughs> we'll see what I do with that. That may happen, that may not. I honestly don't know. We will see, we will see. I have laundry I need to go fold um, and I need to move along with my day. I may be behind on editing this, so this may go up late. If it does, I do apologize, but it's just the days are busy, it seems like, and the tasks that need to be done take up a lot of time, and there's not enough time to do all of the tasks that need to be done, so then I have to prioritize. It is what it is, <laughs> but thanks for being patient. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, that is all that I have this week. Um, thanks for being here. You are wonderful. You are enough. And I will see you all next time.